So I got to get my car service soon. No way. I'll do a few Ks. Mine and Logan's cars need doing too. Oh, well, where you got anywhere to go? I've got a place in mind. Good. Look. Absolutely brilliant. Local. Local to us. Ultra Tune at Toronto. Mm-hmm. Get on the phone right now and talk to Adam down there. Good. And get your car booked in. What do they do for me? They do everything from servicing, tires, batteries, aircon. You Reg- name Rego. Rego checks, all that sort of stuff. You know what? If you're booking early enough, you'll probably even get a loan car for the day. That's pretty handy, actually. Mate, and, and just... So I don't have to get picked up. And you just need that peace of mind that you're getting a good quality service. Right. The oh, ma- where are they at? They're down at Toronto. Right. I'll look them up. Blokes like us, you work away in the mines a mm. lot. I go up to the farm a lot. Yeah. We are putting Ks on our cars. Yeah, heaps, heaps. So you really need that peace of mind that your car is going to be A1 plus the missus. They need to make sure their cars are Oh, I don't want hers broken down. Mate, our kids need to be safe. Yes. 100%. All right, so get down to Altitude. Get down to Altitude. Talk to Adam at Toronto. He will sort you out. Sounds good. Mm. G'day everyone, welcome back to the latest edition of the Heat One Motorsports Podcast, episode 52. It has been a huge year, uh, literally releasing one episode every week. It's been a slog, but we've made it first year, done and dusted out of the way. They always say the first year is the hardest. I've also heard somewhere say that podcasts generally don't make it past 10 episodes. I think. Yeah, so, you know, I'm... I'm Proud to say that I've stayed consistent, but first of all, Todd, Dad, TW, <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for being here for the first one of the year officially. Thanks, mate. Thanks for thanks for getting me back. Yes, I, I need you. I need you. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's great fun. It's awesome. Mm. Twelve months, eh? 12 one months, year. Twelve months. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely went past the the uh, milestone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you've enjoyed it? Oh, mate, it's so good. I, I get the biggest kick out of it. Yep. It's fun. Mm. And sport needs it. Yeah. Sport needs it, especially in Australia. Well, you're the only solo mm. Speedway podcast in Australia. That's right, yep. And we're a big, we're a big country. Mm. We're massive in solo Speedway. We created the sport. Mm. So it's pretty good, mate. I, I, as a dad... Mm. I sit here, I'm proud of you. I'm mm. proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of, proud of, of <sighs> Anna's getting involved with you as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and you're not riding a motorcycle. So selfishly as dad, <laughs> you're loving Ginny that and I say that, you know, <laughs> it's we're loving you guys being involved in the sport. Mm. And it's I only do it because it's fun. Yeah. It's never a chore. Like I'd, I don't – I wake up every morning mm. 4 a.m. to yep. do all my editing mm-hmm. and I never – I bounce out of bed. Yep. You know, I go to bed that night thinking, righto, what am I going to do on the computer in the morning? Yeah. Fucking love it. It's inspirational, mate. It's, it's I'm, good I'm fun. extremely proud of you. It's good fun. And I think Australian Speedway's proud of you. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody loves what you're doing. Mm. Yeah, and keep it up, mate. We're oh. all behind you. Appreciate it. That makes me feel <laughs> all nice, warm and giddy. Yeah, no, you deserve it. It's mm. it's good. And I'm, I know all the boys, you've got a good rapport with all the guys. You know, sure, I've, I've um, had my time in Speedway and... I've had my contacts over the years, and the guys that I've associated with, the older fellows. Mm. But you've, you know, you've, you've got some great friends. Mm. I think they all respect you as well. Yeah, um, yeah, it's wonderful. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I, yeah. I certainly will. It's um, like I said, it's not a chore. So I, I, I no, exactly. genuinely froth on it. But yeah. like just looking back at the year, mm. it's been a, a full on year. Uh, we've had so many cool guests. Mm-hmm. You know, like just the the first one that comes to my mind was the the episode we did with Jason Crump. Mm-hmm. That was fantastic. Like awesome, mate. Blew my mind. Loved the old stories. The, yeah. but loved getting into his psyche. Yeah. About. You know, when he said about um, how you were a, a feeler off mm-hmm. the start, you yeah. know, uh, and Jason just just revved the shit out of it yeah. from the start because he said he couldn't think of too many things at once. He said, if I just hold it flat, mm-hmm. I don't have to think about anything else yeah. or it's one less thing to think about. It's just how, it's just our makeup, isn't it? Mm. It's just, you mm. know, that's what we're all different. Mm. You know, I had to feel, I had to think about 
getting out of the start. That was that was mine. You know, I knew con- subconsciously I wasn't the fastest rider over four laps. Mm. There was guys, I don't know whether you say more game or more aggression than me possibly, yep, yep. Um, where, you know, maybe other guys put their body on the line a little bit more than myself. So it was just a technical thing for, for me to – put that extra effort into gating mm. and and yeah and i was feel where jason was just confident over the whole thing <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean but it's good for you to to have a chat to jason because you you were young mm. like you were even in nappies when we first went over to europe yeah and you grew up looking at jason and watching him world, win world champions so for you to become an adult and then get him on your podcast mm. is, is fantastic it's it's like um it's you sort of look at those guys in awe. It's mm. like, my gosh, he was a three-time world champion, mm-hmm. you know, one of us, like Australia's most successful solos rider. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it, yeah, I, I still, when I see him, especially when we saw him at the centenary, mm-hmm. it's like, you just look up to him. Yep. And it's, it, it was, it's a, such an amazing feeling that he wanted to, to come on the show. And mm. I got to, to, interview him about and it's in saying that his episode wasn't really about his career yeah it was actually more a discussion yeah and it was it was great refreshing it was quite nice it was because there's a lot of people don't know the ins and outs of of Mm -hmm. of you know the things jason used to do and you know how how he went his business you know a lot of people know his results and and whatnot but it was good to get that other side absolutely jason and to get the young fellas too like the last couple of with michael west and yep um, Jimmy Pearson. Jimmy as well. Pearson. I just listened to those the other day. Mm. Great young kids. Mm. Great young kids. Yeah. And who knows where those guys will be in the next five, ten years? Exactly. Matt, bright futures for, for mm. those guys. Absolutely. And uh, I think they're only eighteen and twenty. Mm. You know, so they've got many years to go. I love those episodes because I, I I take it took me back to the uh, to yeah. the l- late eighties. Yeah. Okay. When me and Boise and Mickey Poole and Rod Calhoun all went over there and everything that. You know, those boys, especially Jimmy Pearson the other day, the latest one I listened to, I thought, oh, wow, he's just he's just taking me right back. Yeah. He's exactly living where I was in 88, 89. Mm. Uh, it's so cool to, to see that the sport's still doing that and the young blokes are, you know, doing the hard work, mm. hard hard yards. Yeah. It's it's not a given. Mm. They do a lot of travel and um, there's there's rewards at the end. So, yeah, I'm loving listening to the, to the new kids as well. Yeah. And it was also – Really cool to get some blokes who are, um, you know, maybe in their 30s who are been established now for a while mm. and who are still aiming to be that yep. Grand Prix rider, you know, such as Sam Masters and Rowan Tungate, yep. you know, Josh Pickering, like getting those well established guys. Um, you know, it was um, great talking to them and away from the track, those guys are great blokes. Mm. You know, sit down with them, have a beer, yep. and just chew the fat. Absolutely. So. Absolutely, and I hope that those guys you're talking about who are on the fringe of either A, getting into the Grand Prix of the mm-hmm. World Championship or where Jack Holder is now, mm-hmm. you know, looking at top five, cementing himself in there for some time to go, and, and you know, and um, Maxie Frick, of course, mm-hmm. and Doyley been there. I'm sort of more talking about Max and Jack and Rowan, those guys on the fringe, Sammy Masters. They listen closely to Jason Crump's podcast mm-hmm. and read in between the lines. You, there's a lot to get out of that yeah, yep. as, as a profession and for those boys to lift themselves to become a top three rider in the world. Mm. You listen to in between the lines of what Jason's saying and you can pick up a fair bit. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. And he's, he does a lot – Jason does a lot of those um, like training camps in the UK and yep. whatnot and he's got so much to – so much to give. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? Reckon might get you on the training park one day. Oh, mate! I, <laughs> look, I would love nothing more than to to help a group of guys. I just not comfortable, mm. and I struggle to express myself. Yeah, properly mm. to the kids to get the words out. To get the words out, it's it's just it's a it's a frustration thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's the way it goes. But like, I any any of the boys that you know pick up the phone or mm. give me a message, or whatever, I'm certainly there for them. Yeah, awesome. But as a group. As a group training camp. As far as going to teach a bunch of kids yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I really battle. Yeah. I really okay. battle. And it's a frustration. I really wish I could. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Well, I know Mitch has been on to me. He's like, do you reckon if I uh, hit up your dad, do you reckon he'll come to Poland? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I can always try. I can always try. <laughs> Give him Ginny's number. <laughs> if she says yes, well, maybe we're on the plane. Get her on the plane. <laughs> 
But um, oh, it's been a fantastic year. But uh, a huge thank you to um, Mitch Clough because you know when when you're unavailable and Anders was unavailable, he was always putting his hand up. If he's in the country, he's always happy to help me out. So Mitch, really appreciate it, mate. Uh, the uh, when you were home, it definitely made life a lot easier because I was able to have someone on with that rider's perspective for sure. You know, so current, current rider too, current rider. Yep. So and someone sign him in UK, please. Just thought I'd throw that out there. He won't be long. And I know we're going to talk about the UK on this episode. It's uh, – Mitch will be there. This yeah. is looking really colourful this year. Mm, absolutely. I like to use that word of, of all the lists of the teams and, yeah. and the new riders coming into it. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure it's not far away from Mitch. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Well, we do have our uh, British Speedway preview. We're going to be doing the, uh, the premiership. Mm-hmm. Because we have got coming up in the coming weeks, we've got the Swedish league and the Polish league, and you know there's so many leagues around the world. I can't, we can't re- preview all of them. Sure. So unfortunately, we won't be doing the championship. We won't be doing the under twenty four league and whatnot. We'll just do the three big ones. Yeah. But um, guys, if you I know the season's about to start, but if you are ever wanting more speedway content to consume, there's uh, a fair few other uh, speedway podcasts based in the UK. Um, Round the board speedway podcast podcast with Nathan, Kane and Rob. Uh, they do a great job. They're just three fans who love the sport. Um, similar sort of vibe to this, mm-hmm. you know, like yep. fr- from my perspective, they they don't ride the bike. They're just fans yep. who discuss discuss results, uh, upcoming events, all that sort of stuff. They, they get stuck into the Grand Prix as well. So if you're, you're chasing some more Speedway content, definitely uh, give them guys a listen. Plus the No Breaks, No Fear official British Speedway podcast. That's always a good listen with Ian Brannan. Yep. He speaks very well and, um, you know, he's got all the, the sounds from, from the meetings, mm-hmm. you know, and he, he runs the, the British Speedway Network, BSN, yep. which do a lot of meetings. So yes. a lot of great content there, guys, uh, as well as Tatum Talks. Kelvin Tatum's got a lot of knowledge. A lot of knowledge. So much knowledge. I, again, as a writer, I listen to. I love to listen t- to Kelvin because mm. I grew up with Kelvin. I competed with Kelvin. He was sure he was a few years in front of me. He wasn't far behind, but I wasn't far behind. But I, I, I read in between the lines when I listen to Kelvin. I mm. love to because I always admired him. Yep. I think I told you in the world in that world final in ninety ninety. Yep. He was. Him and Hans Nielsen were the two... The top dogs. The current riders in my mind, just in my mind, who were the top dogs and who were the two guys that I had to beat. So I've always admired Kelvin. He was he was an unbelievable rider, a world long track rider as well. So when I listen to his podcasts, I, I exactly like I've just advised the young kids to listen to Jason, mm. I listen to Kelvin. Yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of the stuff he says brings back all those memories from yep. 30 years ago. Sure, sure. He's got a lot to offer. Yeah, lot, lot, so I, I I encourage the current writers today yeah. to have a listen to, to Tatum's yeah, awesome. podcast as well. Well, that's called Tatum Talks. It's on all the Spotify, Apple, all that sort of stuff, uh, hosted by Kelvin himself and Ian Brennan, as well as Ian Brennan has his own show called Humans of Speedway, which he, he interviews writers personally, sort of like we've been doing the last few months. Yep. So um, there's a lot of good podcasts there, as well as uh, – Talk Speedway podcast, which is I got a feeling they're based in in Scotland, I believe. Scott Frame, his name is. It, it, this is the guy I I struggle to understand those guys. <laughs> yeah, fair dinkum, I really do. <laughs> so many times I've got to hit that rewind button yeah, to say, yeah, "What did they say? Yeah, yeah. What did they say?" That Scottish accents, you got to. They got some heavy accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, the last um, episode they did was with Sam Emlinko. Yeah, right. Nice. That was great. I haven't listened to it. I'll go so to it. cool to yep. listen to. Yeah, you know, it, Sam went into detail about his his world finals. Yeah, you know, wow. where, was it um, the one against Gary Havelock? Uh, in, in 1992? 92 in the wet, in wet, the wet. In the wet at Rossloff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sam wasn't happy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it was a good listen. I'll have a listen to Definitely. that. But, um, yeah, any of the listeners out there, guys, so many other Speedway podcasts to, to sink your teeth into. Um, righto. Let's get into our British Premiership preview. My goodness. But before we do, just a shout out to our uh, sponsor, Ultra Tune at Toronto. Contact Adam, get down there, get your car service, get your race van service. Hell, if you've got a horse and cart, he'll probably service that too. I'm sure he would. So shout out to Adam at Ultra Tune Toronto. Uh, been a partnership with us now for a few months. All right, let's go through the teams. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll just go for teams, you know, one down to Rising Star. We'll, we'll chat about them briefly, and then right at the end, we'll give our predictions. Yep. So uh, straight off the bat, last year's Premiers, mm-hmm. Sheffield Tigers, what a team they've put together this year. 
you know, I'll just read them out. I'll go uh, one to Rising Star. So Jack Holder, Ty Wolfenden, Chris Holder, Josh Pickering, Kyle Howarth, Jason Edwards, and Dan Jilks down at uh, Rising Star. What's the first thing that comes to your mind, Todd, when you see that team on paper? I see three and a half Aussies there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I see three it's and a half a Aussies. Point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the half being Ty Wolfenden. Um, I'm excited about Chris Holder mm-hmm. having a full season. Mm. Um, riding with his brother. Yep. Um, the dynamic holder boys can't yep. wait to see it. Absolutely. And, and what an opportunity for the three young guys, you know, Josh Pickering, yep. Howarth, Edwards and, and Gilks, yep. to be riding with those three guys, mm. both holder brothers yep. and, and Wolfenden. Yeah. It's it's a recipe for success, the whole team, mm. really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, what have we got? We've got four, four world championships in this team, mm-hmm. you know, plus uh, – well, well, Jack Holder's won a, a World Speedway of Nations. Yeah. So, you know, you, you could argue there's five world championships there. Yeah. So, you know, the experience is second to none. Um, and as well as their I, – I, just from what I understand, I've never met Ty personally, mm-hmm. but I feel like he's a real good bloke in the pits to have. You know, he's yeah. always communicating. He's always talking. I feel like he'd be a good a good captain, you know, that, that sort of role, a good oh, mentor. Extremely experienced, yeah. I Look, I only met Ty myself this year Okay. at – um, the centenary in, in Brisbane. Yeah, right. Went okay. up and, and said hello to Ty. I, I seen Ty in Melbourne years ago sure. when we were down there for the Grand Prix. Yeah. But I never actually got to meet Ty. So I had a, had a five minute chat with Ty. was really good. Yeah. Um, I said, come on, what's going on for this year? <laughs> uh, and his first thing was he needs to lose some weight. So I'm yeah, sure he has by right. now. That was some time ago now. Sure, sure. I'm um, hoping Ty can, can have a good, de- good year this year. But, yeah. Um, yeah, look, Jack Holder's the form world rider last year. Yep. If his injury hadn't come about, unfortunately, he's probably sitting at number two in the world. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could, not, could so, not disagree. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good team, mate. 100%. And then, you know, you throw in um, Chris Holder in there, you know, mm-hmm. 2012 world champion, first full year back in the UK. He mm-hmm. come back in halfway through last season, um, and he was essentially between him and Josh. They were the sort of the heroes in the final yep. against Ipswich uh, last year. Um, so yeah, honestly, I'm I'm cannot wait to see this Sheffield team go around because that go around Olden because that track is a racist track. It is a racist track, massive. Just looking at even from even down to Kyle Howarth at five point at five point one up to Jack Holder at eight point nine. There's not a massive gap there between yeah. all those riders. They're yeah. all going to score solid. If someone has a bad night, the other four are going to pick it up. Sure. So, yeah, to statistically look at the track, look mm. at that team. It's They're going to be good. Yeah. And Kyle Howarth uh, is actually having his testimonial this weekend. Wow. Yep. So uh, that, that'll be happening on, I believe, Saturday. You uh, Don't quote me on that, but it's, it's definitely this weekend. Um, the only person I don't really know much about is Jason Edwards. Mm-hmm. I haven't really seen much of him. I know he's he's a young guy, yep. but um, you know when you've got the, when those those top five there, you, you, you're laughing. Really, he must be buzzing. You're laughing. Turning up in the first meeting and pitting next to all those guys. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Good, good for him. Righto. Now this next team, mm-hmm. first time that Oxford has been in the top flight for many many years. When was the last <laughs> oh. time? I, Surely I, wasn't one. I was. Nah, I got a feeling maybe they went till two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, yeah, possibly, okay, yes, and then yep. they then they closed down. Yeah. But um, and then they come back two years ago in mm-hmm. the second division and the third division. Yep. Um, but the second division team is the Oxford Cheaters, so they couldn't call the first division team the Oxford sure. Cheaters this year. Yep. So they're known as the Oxford Spires. Yep. Um. Must be cool to see that your old stomping round has made its way back, especially into the top division. Absolutely, mate. It, it's one of the greatest clubs in history in, in England. Very rich history. And thankfully, still going. Yeah. You know, we've lost Coventry was a was a massive one. Um, Oxford, you know, the Derby's there, and um, Cradley, the Derby with with Coventry. Mm. Uh, Reading was the Derby with Oxford. There's there are four massive teams. It's great to see Oxford still there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you to Jamie Courtney and and everybody involved. Um, shout out to m- my great mates in the Monarch Oxford crew. Kenny Soans. Uh, Kenny Soans yep. and the boys. Still sponsoring the lads. Who are still involved. Mm. So I'm so proud of everybody there. Yeah, it's, and to see them in the first division. Mm. Sp- I like it, Oxford Spies. Yeah. It's cool, it's nice, it's a change. Yeah, and by the looks of it, they've thrown together a pretty handy team. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of other teams in this division that are very top heavy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they, the, the averages sort of drop off as you go down the list. But these guys, are they're, they're pretty even out, you know. So I'll start with um, – so Magic Yanofsky makes his way back to the UK yep. after a, a long time out. Uh, Nikolai Clint, Rowan Tungate, Chris Bomber-Harris, Charles Wright, Lewis Kerr and Ashton Bowsen down at uh, Rising Star. So – Personally, for me, mm-hmm. the first the first name that comes to mind is Magic Yanofsky. Yep. He's going to be their number one. Yep. He's just been removed from the Grand Prix this year. Yep. Very unfortunate for him, considering he only come third two years ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. He's been a well top five rider for years. For many for years. A long, long time. We, we know what he can do for Rotslav, and we know what he's done for Dakana in the yep. past in yep. Sweden. Um, just, yeah, I, I think. Probably getting kicked out of the Grand Prix might have been a bit of a – maybe the kick up the arse he, he might need. Let's see what but, happens. But coming to the UK, just like a lot of top riders have in the last 12 months, it can only be good for him. Absolutely. I, I, let's see. Let's hope that mm. he has a great year. We know he's hot and cold. Yeah. We know when he's hot, he's hot. Mm. And when he's cold, he has an absolute mare, which is a real shame. Yeah. Hope that's not the case for Oxford. But this whole season, this we're not looking at all these teams – it, it, it looks colourful. It's it's like a resurgent for British Speedway, and I'm yeah. loving the look of all these teams. Yeah. With all these – like, there's some big hitters coming back in. Like, I think, you know, Emil, Emil and um, uh, Laguda last yep. year. Yep. Even Nicky signed on at the start of the season, Nicky Peterson. Yep. Um, sort of got this ball rolling. Sure. So good to see Emil killing it. Yeah. So he's obviously enjoying it. Mm. Doyley has never left them, so it's absolute credit to him. Um, wonderful to see – uh, Ty Wolfenham starting the season Absolutely. back in for a full year. Absolutely. Yanos- uh, Yanoski, um, it's just colourful, I think, and every team's got a star. Yeah. It it's really rings bells of, of yesteryear. Yeah. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Seven teams only, it's it's quite it's congested. Quite congested. Yeah. Um, loving it. And riders coming through, like it's great to see Tungate. Yeah. Let's hope can Absolutely. start the season and get a full season in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think British, it's one of the best years to come. Absolutely. We've had for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm loving all, even Millick, Vaclip Millick yeah. in. in. Yeah. Um, it's just so refreshing to see all these fresh faces. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving the look of Yanoski at number one Oxford Spies. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, you know, I think Magic Yanoski first come to the UK for pool. Pool, yeah. Back in the day. Mm. You know, with the Holder Boys and, and with Darcy back then. So, you know, he, he's, he's always been a world-class rider and he's always rode for great teams. Mm. So I'm really hoping – for me personally, I'm always going to be a bit partial towards Oxford. 100%. You know, it's, it's where Anders and I spent most of our childhood. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Even Nikolai Clint, he's sitting at an average of just a touch under seven. He was Kings Lynn's number one last year for a couple of meetings. You know, we know he can move um, – God, I hope Rowan has, has a big year. First year back in the UK for a couple of years. He's the latest Australian champion, you know. If He, he has to. He's got all the ingredients. Yep. He's riding so well, mm. so well. He's a little bit frustrating, Rowan, to why he's he has this hit and miss. Because yep. when he's on, he's, he's look, you know, he come back to Australia with a purpose. He beat the best Australia's got. Yep. Other than Dawley didn't compete. Yep. But... Um, and, he, and he, he got the Australian Championship. Mm. Everything's there for Rowan to have a great year. Sure. Everything's there to have a great year, including including competing in the in the World Championship chase. So yeah. let's hope Oxford's kind to him mm. and he can has a has a good one. What's um just off the top off um off the top of my head, what's Sandy Lane like as a track? Is it gonna suit someone like Rowan, do you think? Yeah, once you get your head around it, okay. I think your first few laps, it's it's tricky. The two completely different corners. Right. I do believe, I read something the other day, um, Scotty Nichols was saying that they have slightly adjusted the track a little okay. bit. I don't exactly know how. Right. But um, once you sort of get your head around it, it's it's a fast track. It's a small fast track. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you do get a lot of speed up coming into the corner. So Sure. Yeah, it it can um, it can be a bit of a home track advantage. Yeah, and right. Rowan will work it out. Yeah, okay, for sure. Yeah, awesome. Um, and obviously, we know what you're going to get from Chris Harris week in week out. He is he's he, the backbone of the team. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. You know exactly what you're going to get from him. And then you got Charles Wright and Lewis Kerr, who have probably 
they've they've always been around. They're mm -hmm. sort of I, I wouldn't call them battlers, but they're not at the top of the division either. They're sort mm -hmm. of just that in between. Um, rider very reliable. Um, and having Lewis Kerr down at, at reserve on a five point three average, that's going to be very strong. Um, we all know reser reserves win meetings. They do, you know, absolutely. Now this next bloke is. I'm going to just say question marks over him. Okay. Um, Ashton Bowsen. Yep. He's 16 years old. Well, he's young. And he he got signed by the Oxford Chargers or the Oxford Club last year yep. on his 16th birthday. Yep. They were they were he he's a motocross bloke, motocross boy converted to speedway, and he's he's killed everything. Yep. Right. But now he's jumped straight up into the top division mm. as a reserve. Just. I don't, is he riding in other Oxford teams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, good. he's riding down. He's riding down in the in the second division as well. Yeah, maybe even the third division as well. I'm not sure. Okay, but yeah, very interesting to see how he goes in in the top division straight away. Could be a little wild card for him. Could right? be yeah, absolutely. Could be absolutely. So yeah, really looking forward to this team. It's mm. a it's a very even as far as averages are concerned. It's quite absolutely even. the top six there. There's not a lot in it. Yeah, and yeah. I guarantee I know who I'll be cheering for because mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, Oxford is a little bit. It's a, I'm biased towards them for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now we've got the Leicester slash Wolverhampton Lions. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously very unfortunate with Wolverhampton yeah, exactly. um, having to fold. But they Leicester have, have picked up a couple of real handy Wolverhampton riders last year. So – and a lot of Aussies too love this side. Um, so we've got Max Frick, Ryan Douglas – Sam Masters, Luke Becker, Richard Lawson, Drew Kemp, and rising star Joe Thompson. I look at those top three, top three Aussie boys there, mm. and it's it's great to see numerous Aussies riding in the same team, just like we saw with Sheffield. Yeah, you know, there's 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 three and a half Aussies in that team. Yeah, but um, this is looking like a I don't know. I reckon Leicester could be a bit of a dark horse this year. Took the words, yeah. They're a bit of a spoiler, really. Mm. You'd be a bit concerned when they turned up, wouldn't you? Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I'm sure Luke Beck, all those Aussies, they all get on like a house on fire. Oh, for sure. Luke Beck, the American there. Yeah, well, they are, all three of them come from Wolverhampton, so yeah. you know, they're tight-knit. Yeah. They, they know what each other are all about. And, and in saying that, Dougie and Sam Masters, they're both ex, uh, ex Leicester riders as well. Oh, uh, well, they know, the, they know, they the, know their way around. They know the track. Mm. Um, and, you know, uh, Sam was, I, I believe Sam was number one for Wolverhampton. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Leicester is essentially picking up another Premiership number one yep. quality. Ryan Douglas uh, was – he was probably number – maybe number three or four, I mm -hmm. believe, when yep. he was at Wolves. But he was also Scunny's – Scunthorpe's number one in the in the championship. Yep. So, a class rider. Yep. Absolute class rider. Luke Becker, uh, I think he's, he's – he's, I reckon he will make Grand Prix one day. Uh, and I hope it's soon. Because he's he's the number one American. He's, he's got, got a, he's the got support a, of Greg Hancock. He's got the support mm -hmm. of Greg Hancock. Yep. Um, I believe he's also just transferred to Woods. Okay. I believe in the off season because right. uh, he was with Jelena Gora. Yep. And he got transferred to Woods. Um, so yeah, I, I I really like watching Luke when he when he got that wild. He was got a wild card spot in yep. the Grand Prix last year. Mm -hmm. Great to watch. Yep. Great to watch. And then um, yeah, Richard Lawson sitting uh, just under six and a half. Um, Six and a half average there, British guy, and then Drew Kemp and Joe Thompson. Those last two names, I don't know a great deal about. Yep. They're sort of younger British guys. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely reckon there could be a bit of spoiler. I, I, spoiler there. When I look at that team, I just look like it's a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, It just looks true. like you could turn up on the pitch and you could park your bike and you know you're going to be in for a fun night. Yeah, for sure. That's positive. Mm. That's everyone backing each other. Yeah. And that, that – Brings results. Yeah, hundred percent. It's the fun team. Yeah, happy team. Happy team generally means you're happy on the track with, with world class. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And you know what? You know, Max not getting a Grand Prix spot this year. You know, I reckon he's just going to come out and just bite he's, down. And he's got that extra mind space, hasn't he? For sure, hundred percent. Yeah, one other one other thing he doesn't have to worry about, and That's the Grand right. Prix is a big thing to worry about. Absolutely. So I reckon he's going to ride pretty free this year. Yeah, they're, they're a bit of a bit of a. A wild card out of Leicester Lions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys on their night, they can go and beat the best. Absolutely. Be a fun team. Yeah, 100%. Now, this next team, they had a turmoil of a year last year. They struggled big time. There was big name riders coming to the country mm -hmm. and then pulling out and then saying they're injured. 
but then going on runs the next day. It was just <laughs> don't mention. <laughs> oh, it was yeah, it was a shocking year. That's but cool. Kingsland Stars have what I believe put together quite a solid team. Yeah, um, and it, I look at Kingsland as they've got a rich history of of great success. It's one of the it's one of the greats as well with the Oxford and the Coventrys and Reddings. Yeah. Absolutely, you know we've had. Um, We've had Jason Crump and Lee Adams ride for Kings Lynn in the past. Yeah. You know, they've always been a strong outfit. They've had the best of the best. Yeah. So uh, I'll write, read them one to seven. So Tobias Musilak, Vadim Tarasenko, Niels Christian Everson, Benjamin Basso, Michael Palm Toft, Patrick Vujot. Vujo- I always stuff this up. Mm. Patrick Vujilo. Yeah, that's I believe. Good, yeah. And uh, British young gun Anders Rowe down at uh, Rising Star. First thing that comes to mind is with Sheffield's brand new team they've got, they couldn't fit in Tobias Musilak, okay. who's sitting at you know just above eight and a half point average. Yeah. So they had to let him go, mm-hmm. but he's he's come to Kings Lynn as their number one. He is going to be the out and out number one for this team. Yeah. I oh, I might be wrong, but the first thing on I do a look at that team is everyone but Anders Rowe based in Europe. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, Tobias Musilak absolutely is. Tarasenko rode for uh, Grujons last year. Uh, Niels Christian Evesen, he's the old war horse. He's, mm-hmm. he's probably rode for most clubs. Um, yeah, Benjamin Basso's rode overseas. Michael Palmtoff, they're all they're, they're Danish, those three guys there. Patrick Vodjulo rode for, um, I believe it was Ribnik last year yep. in Poland, who, who come second in the second division. They've all got... European um, yeah. past. So history. my concern is their base. Yeah, okay. Their mindset. Yeah, right. Fair. They don't, you know, when, when you're based in Europe, like those guys, a lot of those guys are, um, it's a worry as a team, as a team manager. Mm-hmm. You know, Ty Wolfenden, I believe, based himself now back in England. Yep. Which I think will be a massive positive for him. Mm-hmm. So as a team manager... You look at Chris Holder, Jack Holder, Ty Wolfenden. Everyone, and if, when you're based in the UK, I think that's a positive for the team. Sure. Um, you would mentioned about someone got a sore ankle or something. Yeah, yep. Where was he based? He was based in Europe. Yep. So it's quite easy just to not get on that plane. Sure. So I'm just thinking, you know, as the team manager, that concerns me when yeah. I look at that team. Fair. That how solid is that team? Mm. How what is their commitment? Yeah. For the whole season, yeah, to putting in, you know, a, a big effort. Yeah, it concerns me as a team manager. What? Who's going to ring me tomorrow? Mm-hmm. I can't turn up. I don't like talking like that, but yep. that's what I see when I see those names. Yeah, fair enough. Fantastic team. Mm. If they all put in a big effort and they all rock up every week, yeah, they can win anything. Well, I tell you what, my counter argument to that would be Tobias Musilak is has been riding in the UK for a number of years now. Yep. He's ultra reliable. Mm-hmm. I know he got injured last year. He, he wasn't able to, to, to ride in the final, yep. but he's a bad man on a motorcycle. For sure. He's fantastic to watch and he is committed. Absolutely. Yep. But um, yeah, I, c- I can completely understand what you're saying. Absolutely. You know, Chrissy and Jack and Ty and um, Maxi, they're all based there. Yeah. I think Jason Doyle. Yeah. It's a massive part of Speedway, you know, of where you live and sure. how you perform. Um, yeah, it's it's just a concern. Yep. It's a concern if I was the King Kling team manager. Sure. Yep. Yeah, so that's sort of my, my initial reaction for that team. Yep. But if all the boys can get on board and put in a 100%, 100% effort, they can all win races and beat anybody. Sure. Mm. No, can't, can't argue with that. Absolutely. Right. Next team, Bellevue Aces. Now they've they've done a little bit of shuffling mm-hmm. here and there with this team. There's a, a strong Aussie outfit here. So up at number one, Brady Kurtz, yep. Dan Bewley, Jamin Lidsey, Ben Cook, Norick Bladorn, Connor Mountain, and rising star Connor Bailey. Yep. Now, obviously, the, there's there's three names that stand out here for sure, which is Brady Kurtz, Dan Bewley, Jamin Lidsey. Mm-hmm. Now we know what Dan Bewley can do. Mm-hmm. You know, Grand Prix rider. He's won. He's won numerous Grand Prix now. He's he's probably he's got he's gonna he's aiming for a medal this year. I believe. I think that should be minimum as a minimum as a minimum. So he's going to be switched on mm-hmm. because 
you know, I see Dan Bewley's name and I see an eight point average. Mm -hmm. That's, he should be doing well more than that, in my opinion. He's a bit, Dan Bewley in my eyes, when he's on, he is the fastest individual rider in the world. Mm. Without doubt, he's mm. quicker than Smarslick. Yep. But the package is where it comes. And it's frustrating to see how talented Dan Bewley is, mm. and to see how fast he can be. Um, I just hope he gets it all together this year. Speedway needs it. Yeah, We need a Dan Bewley pushing for a world championship yep. to take it to – and and run with Jack, – like Jack Holder run with Smarslick sure. last year yep. and Freddie Lingren. Um Let's hope Dan can get it all together. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, yeah, so it's yeah, be good for Bellevue too. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, I, I've got no doubt in my mind that that Mark Lemon, the the team manager, he's he'll get the best out of these guys. Mm. Um, and you know, we, we spoke about before about those fringies, those guys who are just knocking on the door of the Grand Prix. Brady Kurtz and Jamin Lidsey, that's them to a T. Absolutely, they are there or thereabouts. I think I think Jamin Lindsay's with his performance this year in Australian season. Yeah. He's he's probably the one who's coming up the quickest. Yeah, okay. Coming from down here to up there, he's he's really coming on stage. Yep. Fast. And I believe Jamo, he might only be 23, 24. Mm-hmm. You know, blokes like Brady Kurtz and Max mm-hmm. and Jack Holder, they're all 27, 28, 29. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Jamo's he's sort of getting to that level at a quite younger age. Mm. So, very excited to see see how he goes this year. Um, and Jamo had a great season last year for Bellevue. Yeah. You know, he, he put points on his average. Yep. Um, and like you said, he's had a fantastic Australian summer. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully they put it all together. And then Benny Cook, he's another bloke who um, – he was with P- Peterborough last year. Yeah. So he's he's now moved to, to Bellevue when sure. Peterborough folded. Sure. Um, who's now the – he's the pool captain in the championship as well. Yeah, nice. Mass- massive honour for him. Yeah, you know, for we sure. All, we all know how – Rich pool is in history and especially sure. Australian riders as well. Yeah. So massive honour for Ben to captain pool. I reckon he's going to take that confidence into Bellevue this year. Big time. Big time. Lemo knows what he's doing. 100% he does. He knows exactly what he's doing. Even with the young blokes, you know, of Nick yeah. Bladorn and Connor Mountain and Connor Bailey there. Yeah. Um, all can score decent points. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I've seen a little bit of Norik Bladorn in the last few years. He's, he's a German kid. Mm-hmm. He rides quite well. He's represented yep. Germany in the World Cups. Um, he knows the quick way around Bellevue. He's been there for a few years. Don't know much about Connor Mountain, but Connor Bailey, I'm pretty sure Connor Bailey is an Australian-born rider, similar I to Ty. so, yes. Um, they yep. nicknamed him the Tornado because okay. he's fucking fast. fast yeah, he, I, he's, a, he's a British under-21 champion. Yeah. I was watching videos of Connor a few years ago. Yeah, okay. Yeah, coming through. Right. He, he looked really good then. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's – Quite handy to have him be on the bottom there, isn't it? Absolutely. So, yeah, Bellevue could um, – I, I think there's been stronger teams in the past with mm-hmm. Bellevue. Yeah. I think they have been stronger. I I don't know. I, I can't see them finishing top two this year. You know, they've always – in the last few years, they've been always making the final or thereabouts. Mm. I, I, I don't th- – I think they could be better. But mm. time will tell. I look at I look at what could be. I think Lemo – when I look at Lemo's team there, Mark Lemon – I look at they, – they can all improve mm. their average there. Sure. Um, Brady's been at it a while now. Mm. 8.5 is a pretty decent average. Mm. He's a definitely a nine-point rider, 100%. Bewley's closer to a 10-point rider Easy. on his day. Easy. Yep. He needs to be. He is so fast when he wants to be. Yeah. Jimon Lindsay is the kid coming through fast. Yep. He's the jack holder of last year. Yeah. And he's really sure. rising quick. 7.8, Jimon Lindsay's – He's a nine-point rider as well. Yep. So just those three alone uh, is, is a big improvement. You could just drop John and Lindsay in the middle of a Grand Prix season this year yep. and put him in an individual meeting anywhere. He could go out and make a final. Absolutely. Absolutely he could. Sure so could. that team's going to get better yep. as a group. Yep. 100%. So, yeah, we'll see see how that goes. I'm mm. looking interested to see Bellevue and in saying that the track that they're riding on day yep. in, day out, that track is fantastic. It looks unreal. But is that like if, if I'm an opposition and I'm coming to Bellevue, man, I'm getting excited. Yeah, because everyone loves riding there. So that's tough for them. True, that's true. That's tough for them to, you know, the the Jason Doyles and the MLC Futnoffs, they turn up there and you've got, you know, you th- well, up against Kurtz, any of those boys yeah. in, in the final, she's on. Because mm. Doyle and Savutnoff, all those guys love that place. So that's yeah. a bit of a... 
Not so you don't reckon there's much home ground advantage that those sorts of tracks. I can't imagine. Yeah, sure. I can't imagine. No, not like an Ipswich, for example. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Well, before we get to Ipswich. So do you and the missus go camping often? Mm, not as much as we'd like. It gets a bit hard. Mm. Like, you know, you drive X amount of hours down there to wherever you're going. Then when you get there, you've got to set up the tent. It's mm. heavy. It's a big bastard. Yeah. Pull it out. Yeah, been there, done that. Set it up, pitch your tent, you know, then it's windy. And it never packs up the same way you got it out. I don't know one person that's actually set up a tent and then put it back in exactly you how can't. they can't, no, it. no, that just never happens. That is actually not a thing. It's impossible. I, I, I genuinely dislike the whole, even the 30 second tent mm, thing that mm. came out a few years ago, even yeah, that's yeah. a bit of a... It went up quick, mm. but getting it back in the bag was no good. And then there's fights. Yeah. There's dramas. Yeah. There's yeah. like there's like breakups over it. Yeah. It's fucked. Surely there's a better way. Well, luckily, I do know a guy. Know a guy? I know a guy, Tommy down at Ultrafab, down at Bullaroo. Mm-hmm. He has got some of these hectic rooftop campers that yeah, he does yeah, yeah. himself. Be quicker. Quicker. They look un- the best part is they look good. Yeah. On yeah. the car. We we all love our Utes, right? Yeah. yeah. We love our trucks. You know, you want the best canopy, you want the best rooftop. Yeah. Tommy can so do he does. So he does trays, canopies, rooftop tents, you name it. Pretty much anything to do with your four-wheel drive, yeah, yeah. he'll do. All metal fabrication. One of the best sheet metal fabricators I've ever seen. Well, you got a four-wheel drive, you might have to go down and get him to hook you up. Mate, I might be coming for you, Tom, because he has some absolutely unreal gear. Yeah. And it's different to everyone else. Yeah, nice. It's awesome. So definitely give Tom a call at Ultrafab uh, down at Bullaroo. Best, best stuff. They look unreal. And mm, sounds good. some of the photos of the work he's done yeah. on Dodge Rams, yeah, yeah. Silverados, uh, like 200 series Land Cruisers. I have to check it out. Get on their Instagram and their socials and... Have a squeeze. Wild. Anyways, make sure you chat to Tom. Ultra fab. Right. Speaking of Ipswich, mm-hmm. now this would, without a doubt, be the most top-heavy team mm-hmm. in the league. Yep. You know, you've got you got two blokes here in Seyfudinov and Jason Doyle. You know, Seyfudinov with a ten point ten average. That's massive. Mm-hmm. That's Jason Crump numbers. That's Lee Adam numbers. Hans Nielsen numbers. Hans Nielsen numbers. Then, and he's backed up by none other than than yep. another person of that caliber and jason doyle with Absolutely. a 9.12 um then we've got danny king adam ellis aussies keenan rue jordan jenkins and rising star dan thompson now <clears throat> in the past ipswich have been maybe criticized for being too top heavy and therefore you know a lot of your average is taken up with the top two boys yep you know then you, you sort of you got to spread the average out in the last four four or five riders but you know, Danny King on his night, he, he's a maximum man. I've seen him do it last year. For sure. Absolute maximum Very experienced. Man. You know, he's a, he's in a, I'm pretty sure he's a British final winner in the past. Yep. He's rode in, rode in Grand Prix as a wild card. Adam Ellis is the same. Mm-hmm. He, he's just had a shocking year, Adam Ellis. He's, he's had quite a poor year. Um, I'm, I think he can smash that 5.57 average. Absolutely. And Ken and Rue. Yeah. 100%. Both boys in the same boat. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ken and Rue, uh, had a had a, a, a good a strong Australian summer, mm-hmm. um, considering of the, the competition he was up against. Mm-hmm. Mate, he was mixing it with him absolutely. So, yep. uh, and then I honestly I don't know too much about Jordan Jenkins and Dam Thompson just because they're younger British guys for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The, the only knock you could put on them is maybe they're too top heavy, but there is definitely room to move for for some of those guys. Yeah, well. Y- Definitely Adam Ellis and Keenan Root. Yeah. You know, four and five, five and a half average there. Those boys are hundred percent. They're they're better average riders than that. I like both them. Well, you look at their styles, man. Yeah. They both hang off the bike pretty hard. They're 100%. they're good fun to watch. That'd be great round up switch to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Look, loving, loving, and then Danny King, experienced. Yeah, must be great for him to to rub shoulders with Doyle and say Vutin off. Mm. Um, you, you know, when I look, I I just so proud that. You know, Britain's slowly getting these big names back. And when I look at Emil Saint off of a ten point ten average, it tells me he's having fun. Yeah, he's enjoying it. Mm. Um, and I think, and we've seen the other riders come back this year in tie. And I think England's starting 
to get that feeling where it's fun again. Yeah. Because Poland's been there for so long now that it's it's a bit of a chore. Yeah. You know, it, everyone's there because the money, but the, when comes money and comes sponsorship, comes pressure. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's great to see that Emil's got that average and is obviously enjoying himself. So I think England's getting the reputation, probably a little bit like Sweden, yep. where you race on Poland on a Sunday afternoon and it's a bit of a relief when you get on the plane. Yeah. Well, it used to be for me, and I used to go back to Sweden, and it was, you're riding against the similar riders, mm. but the atmosphere is totally different. Yeah, you really enjoy yourself. More relaxed. More relaxed. Yeah. I reckon England's falling into that category, into the Swedish category, where it's 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 more fun for the guys nowadays. Sure. More relaxed. Yep. To to boot with that is how challenging the tracks are yeah. compared to Sweden. Yeah. For me, Sweden was a lot more open, and you sort of knew what you're coming to. Where England's a lot of the dog tracks. You know, um, you don't know, some are tight, some are long, tracks aren't really perfect. That's good as a rider to learn. Mm. And it's great that these are, that these these well-established Grand Prix stars and world riders are coming back to England. It's only going to help them, yep. in Ofskis. Yep. Yep. So I think it's it's a two-way – I think England's a winner out of this. Sure, oh, Absol- 100%. Absolutely winner out of this, that um, – You've got these big hitters coming back, and, and if I can say in a way that they're relearning to ride again – Yeah, yeah. On these tricky tracks, mm. to bonus with that, they're having fun. Yeah. They don't have the pressure of pole on. Yeah. <coughs> I can't disagree, and I think I heard Ty say that in an interview. He said he comes to Sheffield and it's fun. Mm. You know, I think more or less, without with reading between the lines, he was more or less forced mm-hmm. to race – for Rotslav that day when he broke his wrist. Sure. He yeah. said, I should not have ridden. Ridden, yeah. I'm here for the fans. Mm-hmm. They said, I must ride. Yeah. You know, read between the lines. They're mm. sort of, they're sort of, in a way, they're, they're forcing him, you know. So it's, he comes to Sheffield and any of these guys, they come here and it's, uh, it's a, not a relaxing vibe, but mm. it's, it's a fun vibe. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, maybe the t- tides have turned over the years because, mm. I mean, when I first started in the years well before me, England was the place. Yeah, yep. It was where the world was, Speedway. Mm. And then Poland was, you know, a few of the riders started going to Poland on Sundays and it was the relaxed place for us. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, okay. When I went over there in 91, it, it was chill out time. Yeah. Because you, you went over there with good machinery. Mm. The rider quality wasn't as good as it was in England. Yep. And you were pretty confident you were going to get double figures every every yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Decent money. Good pay packet. Good yep. pay packet. And you didn't feel the pressure and it was the relaxed Sunday. Yeah. It's coming back sure. back now. Yeah. You know, Poland's changed. Poland's got – well, everyone know what Poland's all about now. And hopefully the European and world champion riders are coming back to England. Yeah. For the, for the relaxation. Yeah. And for the tricky tracks to learn. Mm. Mm. And it's looking like that that is 100% the case. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Emil does look like he's having fun. And you know what? I'm sure he's been on the blower in the off-season, probably, mm-hmm. probably talking to these blokes, talking to the Yanovskis and talking to the Vaclav Miliks and, mm-hmm. and you know, these guys saying, yeah, fuck it, come to, come to England. It's yep. great. Yeah, absolutely you it know? is. And Ty would be doing the same thing. Big time. So British British – Supporters, get out there and support them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, enjoy it. Enjoy it while you while this is coming to you. Yeah. What's that? What was the old catchphrase back in the day? Was it? Oh, go on. Was it get your get your backside trackside? Track side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they need to run a promo like that because tell you what, you got some of the best riders back in the UK this year. Absolutely awesome to watch. Yep. Um, righto. Last one. Birmingham Brummies. Mm-hmm. Now these guys moved up. They were in the championship last year. They've moved up to, to, to make that seventh spot in yep. the premiership. Now, there has been a, a recent injury cloud over Piotr Pavlicki, yep. which is a shame because he was riding extremely well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he rode for Rotslav last year, um, which is in the extra league. Yep. He's, he's an ex-Grand Prix rider. Mm-hmm. He's um, one of the top Polish riders in the world. Uh, one of the top Polish riders. Uh, so sh- he's gone down with injury. He's sitting at a seven and a half average. I dare say that's because he hasn't been to the UK in a very long time. Sure. If ever. I'm not mm-hmm. actually sure if he's been to the UK before. But um, he's replaced by Scott Nichols. Mm-hmm. Now, I wouldn't exactly say that's a like-for-like like replacement. Scott's obviously a great UK rider and he ha- he's, he's a seven-time British champion. But with the strength of this competition this year, Scott, I wouldn't think he was an out-and-out out number one in the premiership. 
not necessarily in this premiership. Yeah. When you look at Ty Wolfenden or Jack Holder or Max Frick or Emil Seyfutnoff. But I think when we're talking about England and put a Pavlicki versus Scott Nichols, yep. I think it's like for like. Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, as individuals. Yeah. As individuals. Yeah. For sure. In England. Mm. Scotty's he's talented kid, mate. Well, man. Man. He's, he's not a boy he's anymore. He's not a kid no more. He's, he's got silver hair like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think as an individual in, that, in England, in it's England. a like yeah, for like. Sure. Yep. So I think Sam Malenko, did he pull this off? He may have done. He's the he's the team manager. He is, absolutely. Um we had a little chat to Sam about this in the in the summer. Yeah. And sort of knew this was coming up. Mm. We didn't have we couldn't say much, but um I think Birmingham's all right. Yeah, okay. Because different maybe in Lesno. Yep. yep. Scott yeah, okay. versus Poiter. Sure, sure. But um I think he I think I think Scott will, Scott will cover that. Yeah, okay. That's I really do. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I mean, hey, love love watching Scott ride. He mm. he was um he rode, f- did a handful of meetings for um, Wolverhampton at the start of last year yep. when Luke Becker broke his ankle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when Scott does a lot of the interviews and whatnot and he races in the championship, but when he comes up to the, the premiership, he doesn't look out of place. Not at all. He doesn't look out of place. But I do definitely reckon that, you know, give Piotr Pavlicki fully fit maybe half a dozen meetings under his belt. Yeah, I can't I argue that. It'll be fucking quick. Yeah. It'll yep. be great to watch. Absolutely. And you know what? Same for Vaclav Milik. Mm. Hasn't, he, uh, hasn't been... To the UK since about 2015. Right. I believe he rode for Kings Lynn back then, mm-hmm. maybe, I believe, yep. from memory. Um, but Piotr Pavlicki and Vaclav Milik both rode an extra league last year. Yep. Piotr, uh, Milik rode for um, Crosno mm-hmm. with Jason Doyle. He's fast. Yep. He was the captain of Czech Republic in the World Cup. Now, if I think, if I think he, they use him a fair bit in, over the years in the Grand Prix in Prague. Correct, yes. And he's a bit of a trapper. Yeah, okay. He's a bit of a trap yeah, from right. memory from watching him on the Grand Prix. I'll be definitely taking notice now. So um, uh, that's good riding in England. Yeah, okay. Big yeah, 100%. 100%. That's a big advantage. Um, Stevie Worrell, you know what you're going to get from Stevie. Mm-hmm. He's sitting at a six and a half point average. He um, he got second last year to Dan Bewley in the British final. Yeah. So he got that card of spot, Stevie Worrell. Yeah. Um, fantastic rider. Very Absolutely. classy. Then uh, – Young Polish kid, 22-year-old, Victor Lampard. I, I know he did quite well in, in world under 21 right. level, I yep. believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but first time coming to the UK. I don't know what the Birmingham track's like. I don't know. I've never been there either. Never been there. Harry Bar, no. Um, so, yeah, be interesting to see how he goes. You know, you could probably say the same thing for for Piotr Pavlicki or, or Milik, you know, but I think world-class riders like them, mm-hmm. they work it out pretty quick. It doesn't take them long, mate. Yeah, and then obviously uh, Tom Brennan, uh, 5.8. He's another up-and-coming um, up and coming rider who has represented the UK in yeah. the World Cup last year. He's a talent. Um, and Zach Cook, mm-hmm. you know, Ben's brother. Uh, great to see him get a, a premiership ride. Now Wolverhampton's folded. Yep. He was with Wolverhampton last year. And then rising star Leon Flint, who was also a Wolverhampton rider, yep. who's fantastic to watch. Mm-hmm. Young guy, um, was at Berwick for a number of years. I think mm-hmm. he was their captain last year, I believe. Um, so I think Leon may have moved to Glasgow mm-hmm. this year or Red Car, shit, one of those two. So, yeah, there's a th- they're another team that I'm interested to see how it goes. Sort of similar to a Leicester. They could be a bit of a party spoiler. It's a bit of a mystery, really. I believe. It's a bit of a mystery how it's all going to work out. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit concerned with the European base thing again. Yeah. You know, with Lampart, Milik, Pavlicki. Yeah. Um, got good, solid couple of British boys there. Yep, absolutely. In, uh, in Worrell and Brennan. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a mystery, but Sam Mamalenko behind behind all that, mm. um, who knows what will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, they're exciting. It's exciting. It's, it's fantastic for, for Birmingham. Yep. Um, with Wolverhampton now not on the calendar. Yep. So let's and, hope and, that and they Peter get Burr, and Peter Burr. and yeah. Peterborough and yeah. Peterborough. Um, so let's hope that Birmingham and Leicester yeah. can attract a few of those fans. Yeah, hundred percent, and support them during the year. Hundred percent. So that's the um, that's the teams for the for the two thousand twenty four mm-hmm. Premiership. Uh, let's get to our predictions. Okay, let's get these done. As Anders, uh, Anders. Yeah. So I've got Anders predictions seven to one. Yeah, right. So I'll read them out when we read ours out. But before we get into our predictions, guys, a shout out to our sponsor, Lake Mac Adventures. 
If you want to get out and experience Lake Macquarie in person to, to check out our home, it's our home. I absolutely love Lake Macquarie. I will I will 100% die there one day. We're fortunate, mate. Best place in the world. If you want to get down there, get on the water, talk to Kyle at Lake Mac Adventures, hire fishing boats, stand-up paddle boards, kayaks, anything you, anything you need, you get out there, check out Lake Macquarie. He will sort you out. Right. Predictions. Yep. Now I've got mine. I'll start on okay. who on who I think will be seventh. Okay. And then we'll work our way to the top. Now, unfortunately, we have just been speaking about him. I reckon <laughs> that Birmingham Brummies might struggle a bit. Go on Birmingham. Yeah. Feeding. I'm going Birmingham. Number okay. S- number seven. Now, I know we just gave Scotty a big rap, but yeah, I just I just think there's a lack of firepower. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe you know. It might take Pavliki, Milik, Lampart. It might take them a bit, bit long to get going. Yep, I'm sure they will work it out. But you, you got to, with the quality of the league this year, they've got to be on it from the get go. They yep. ca- they can't be off the button because I feel like they could get left behind. Could be a long year. Yeah, I think it could be. And you know, you brought up a good point with their European base. That mm-hmm. that could be tricky. Yep, that could be tricky. So yeah, I've got them sitting down in seventh. Okay. Oh, you want me to go now? Yeah, you, who's your seven? Oh, right, okay, yep. I've got Kings Lynn. Ooh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I've got Kings Lynn. Mm. And purely for that European base, as you just mentioned. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, look, I only see Anders Rowe as the British base rider. Well, I, I know Benjamin Basso and Vadim Tarasenko both ride in the championship. Okay. Don't know if they're based in the UK, though. Yeah. But they do both have championship clubs. Yep, Um. Yep. So, yeah, don't know if that helps or not. I think their star rider, as you mentioned, is Tobias Musilak, mm-hmm. quality rider. Yeah. If he's slightly off, mm. I think these guys will be battling. Yeah, okay. Um, Kingsland track is a magic track. Right. I don't know anybody that never enjoyed Kingsland. Is that right? So it doesn't, for me, it doesn't really hold track advantage. Okay. You know, Dawley's going to go there and just rip it up. Okay, yep. Um, Lindsay's going to go there and rip it up. Yeah. Um. Or yeah. So. Yeah. It's the it's the track not in their favour because it's so good. Sounds weird, sure. but because Kingsland's so good. Yep. Um. And the commitment for me, I hope I'm wrong. It's the actual commitment for the whole year. Yep. Not just for the first year. Not just for the first. Um. First meeting, of all the guys, you know, turning up, and 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 giving a hundred percent. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Fair I've, enough. So I've, I'm, that's I've unfortunately got Kingsley at number seven. Yeah, fair enough. Well, they are my number six. Okay. For those exact same. Where did three. Anders go? Uh, Anders has put in. Oh, so was so his An- number seven. Anders number seven. Sorry. So Anders has had Kingsley. Oh, there you go. Same as you. Yeah. He's at number seven. My number six was Kingsley. Anders number six was Birmingham. Right. So we're all very similar at the sure. moment. But who's your number six? My number six. Got to look at me. Think. Birmingham. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Birmingham. Yeah, there's a bit of a trend there. You know, between me, you, and Anders, we've got mm-hmm. them both at six and seven. Um, as much as I would love for them to prove me wrong, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, I would love to see Millick and Lampart and and Vodulo and all these guys. I would love for them to kill it. Absolutely. Love to see it. Um, you know, maybe you could say you look at someone like uh, Niels Christian Evesen. Maybe he's getting a bit on with age. Mm-hmm. You know, you look what happened to Nicky Pedersen last year. Niels was better than 6.6. He could come out and have a great year. He absolutely could. He, 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 he's um, capable. Yeah. Fingers crossed he does. But 6.6 is a good average for Neil to have as a team manager. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Righto. <clears throat> and is number five. What's he got? He's gone for Oxford. Oh, the Oxford Spies. My number five. I've actually gone Bellevue. Fair dinkum. I've gone Bellevue down at number five, just missing out on, Tell me. on a playoff Talk spot. Tell me. Honestly, I I just see... Hey, Lemo, did you hear this? <laughs> yeah, Lemo, listen to this. <laughs> Not that I know fuck all about Speedway. Go on, talk to, talk to me. I... I see Dan Bewley at an eight-point average, and yep. I know he can improve on it, mm-hmm. and I know for Dakana he rides well, yep. and I know for um, Rotslav he Rotslav. rides well. Yep. But there's times in the Grand Prix where it doesn't he doesn't piece it all together, and obviously if he's only seeing it's that, frustrating, yep, and he's only seeing an eight-point average, mm-hmm. and it's something's not clicking for him in the UK mm. now. Maybe because he's 
puts all his time and effort into Rotslav and the Grand Prix. You know, you've got Jamin Lidsey, who's up and coming, who's only 0.15 points behind him. Mm-hmm. And Dan Bewley has years of experience on, on, on J-Mo. Now, I'm not knocking Bewley at all. I know he's committed, but I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot on his plate. And I would love for him to prove me wrong. Mm. But, you know, I can see I can see Brady up top doing doing the doing the thing, mm-hmm. doing it properly, doing it well. I can see J Mo, you know, moving up as well. For sure. But can can J Mo take that number five spot this year? Possibly. But I don't know. I just I just think there's I just think there's other teams who are gonna put it together better. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, Take that, take that with a grain of salt because knowing these guys and this team, they could come out and blow us away. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, just my opinion anyway. Yeah, that's cool. It's interesting to see how it'll turn out. Mm. Yeah, Bewley is a key. He's a key. He's definitely a 10-point rider. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Definitely a 10-point rider. So when I see that eight point, I wonder why, mm. you know? Yeah, it is. It's frustrating. It's because, yeah, he's 100% better than that. All right, interesting. So you've got them where? So I've got them at number five. Number five. So unfortunately, Lemo and, and our Aussie boys, I think they just miss out on a playoff spot this okay. year. Okay. So you're number five. Well, unfortunately, I've got Oxford. <laughs> yeah, right. I've got Oxford at five. Yep. I've got Oxford at five. Um, look, the backbone of the team is Chris Harris. Yep. Hundred percent as Chris Harris. If Chris has any sort of injury, that's a worry yep. for the team. The biggest question mark is Yanovsky. Yep. Um, I like Clint. I love Nikolai Clint's style yep. on a bike. Yep. I love his gating. Mm-hmm. Nikolai Clint's got everything. Mm. He can improve on a six point nine average. Yep. Um, but he's is, is, is it Nikolai prone? Am I getting Nikolai or Riss? Um, Eric Riss Eric Riss confused. confused with injuries and Eric Riss had that he had a brain something last year something right. happened not right in his head and he, he he was going all fuzzy and he couldn't see like he he, okay. he had dramas probably but, Eric I'm thinking of but, is it but Nikolai Clint did have a big crash last year riding for Gdansk he had a right. big collision with um, oh shit I can't remember who it is now off the top of my head so Nikolai has been injured in the past, but I probably wouldn't say it's a trend. Yeah, cool. I don't think so. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Now, because I love watching Nikolai ride the bike. Yeah. He's magic. Yeah. He's, 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 um, he does everything right for me. Yeah. A little bit frustrating why he hasn't maybe gone further sure. in, in the World Championship. I yeah. don't know the background. Yeah. I don't know whether he's um, – even with his uh, qualifications during the year, I don't know. But um, Janowski's a question mark. Yeah. Being out of the Grand Prix, hoping that's a positive for Oxford. Yeah. Um, Rowan. If Rowan can go, he's in the same boat as John and Lindsay. Yeah. He's climbing fast. Yeah. With his current um, form here in Australia, um, all the ingredients are there for Rowan to smash that 6.6. Yeah. If he can do that and, and Janowski can um, – can bring the goods. Yep. They're, they're better than five. Yeah, okay. But they're the question marks. Yeah, fair so enough. I've put them in five. Ah, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, so that was number five. And as I believe he had, he had Oxford five. Right, number four. Mm-hmm. My, so this is playoffs. This is playoffs now. Now, I've gone with Ipswich. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people say the same thing. They're too top heavy. They're, you know, they haven't got a lot of depth and this and that. Well, I reckon if you've got Emil Seyfudinov and Jason Doyle, I reckon you could have five rising stars underneath them mm-hmm. and you will still come to some success because they are just so good. Okay. I definitely reckon Adam Ellis needs to have a breakout year and I think if he does, if he turns his stuff around, yep. they, I reckon he can absolutely – I reckon he could put over a point and a half on his average. Yep. There's no reason why him down at 5.5, there's no reason why he can't come up to Danny King's average at seven. Yep. No reason why he can't. Mm-hmm. He's he's unreal to watch. I think Keenan Rue's come leaps and bounds as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he had a good – there was actually a good column about Keenan Rue in the latest Speedway star, yep. So which is a good read. He's hungry. Sure. He's got a fire in the belly. For absolutely. Um, so, I don't know. I just reckon that – that even if they even if they are a bit of a toilers around that six fifth mark, I definitely reckon Doily and then we'll say Foodnov 
can throw them over the shoulder and drag them up to fifth, up, up to fourth, up to fourth into yeah. the playoffs. I reckon. Yep. So that's that's my reason for going there. Yeah, right now. Yeah, right now. Yeah, it's fair enough. So you think they're just getting to the top four? I think they were lucky to get to the final last year. Yeah, okay. They, I'm pretty sure they come fourth last year. Okay. Just they they just pipped Leicester for fourth spot. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, because the that's right. The two finalists last year in Sheffield and Ipswich, they were both fourth and third. Fourth and third. It was yeah. the first time in history that that's the right. final wasn't a first or second. Yep. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. yeah, I reckon. I reckon if if they if they're not going grey guns, I reckon say Foodnov and Doyle skull drag them into the into fourth spot. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Well, I've got Leicester. Ooh, yeah. Leicester at four. I think the boys can get there, and I can. Get, I think they can get there on pure fun fact. Yeah, okay. And pull and and pull them, pull each other. Yep. Through. Yep. To see through the year. Um, if you look at them all, there they're all British based. Mm-hmm. I, which I'm going on about it. It it matters. Yep. It matters for your commitment. Yep. And um, just a fun fact: uh, the quality of Max Frick. Um, you, you don't have to say no more words. Mm. Two time Grand Prix winner. Um, can beat anyone on his day. Um, not being in the Grand Prix, a little bit of a positive for Leicester Lions. Yep. Um, Ryan Douglas, up and coming. Yep. Quality rider. Sam Masters, quality British rider. Mm. Doesn't get much better. Yep. Um, Luke Becker, same boat as as the two boys on top of him mm. in Masters and Douglas with the backing of Greg. Um, and all British boys, Lawson Kemp, Thompson. I just think it's 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 just an ingredient for a good solid team mm. and a happy team. I actually heard comparisons. They're, they're comparing Leicester Lions, and even though they, there is a lot of Wolverhampton riders in there, they're comparing Leicester Lions to last year's Wolverhampton, where mm-hmm. everyone wrote them off. Yeah, they're okay. going to finish last or second last. Yep. But then they nearly push for a for a, a final spot in the end. Yep. You know, for for a playoff spot. Playoff spot. Yep. So yeah, I can't I can't argue with all that. I'm pretty sure they'll be in, they'll they'll get into the four. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and Anders at fourth in the first playoff spot. He had Leicester too. Yep. Yeah, he had cool. Leicester. Um, righto. So number three, uh, number three for me. You got third. I've got Old Faithful. My very biased opinion towards the Oxford Spires. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just if I, they fire. Yeah, I agree. I can see Yanovsky getting booted mm-hmm. out of the out of the Grand Prix. I reckon he's. Th- there was an interview with him in the off season, and apparently, just before he got injured for Rotslav, mm-hmm. when he when he when the clutch cable snapped on him or something, yeah, yeah. Just before he got injured, he reckoned he fixed everything. <laughs> oh, really? And then he got injured. Yeah. So I, I reckon there's some sort of there's going to be a fuck it sort of mentality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's, he's going to England. And he's going to. He's going to really fire. I really hope so because there is a little bit of the – he can have a bad case of the Christoph Kasperjaks at times, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like he can be hit and miss, especially in the Grand Prix. but I think coming to the UK – He's also got Greg Hancock on speed dial as well. That's true. Who that's obviously true. knows England a lot back of his hand. Yeah, and if you're making that commitment to come back to the UK, mm. you're coming back to – to yeah. reignite something. Oh, it's wonderful for, for, for England, Speedway. Yep. So I reckon – I can see Janowski – Bettering that eight point average for sure. Um, I agree with everything that you're saying about Nikolai Clint. Mm-hmm. I definitely reckon Nikolai Clint was hard done by not getting put into the Danish team in the World Cup. Okay, yeah. I think Nicky Pedersen putting himself in. Mm-hmm. I reckon that hurt him a bit. Okay, for sure. Yeah. I reckon it was very close between Nikolai Clint and Freddie Jakobsen. All right. Definitely yep. one of those two boys should have been over Nicky. Sure. Just my opinion. Yep. Um, Rowan is just coming off such a high. Big time. Such a high. And we all know what he can do if he puts his mind to something. Absolutely, we know. Which we just spoke about. You know, he said, I'm going to leave my wife or my partner and my newborn baby mm-hmm. to go win the Australian Championship. And he did. He did. So I've got no doubt in my mind if he puts that mentality into Oxford, mm-hmm. there's no reason why he can't be a, a nine point rider. Yep. Um, like we said, Chris Harris, the backbone, solid as a rock. You know what you're going to get. Um, and I, I, I actually put I put Charles Wright and Louis Kerr in that same sort of in that in that Danny King yep. sort of yep. um, you know what you're going to get yep. just solid British riders you know they're 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 in the top five British riders in in, in, in the country yep. um, 
And then Ashton Bowden, he's the question mark. Okay. I would love for I would love for him to, to fire. Yeah. But so I've I've put them up to third. Yep. No. Hard to argue, mate. If they fire. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you, you never know. Mm. Who who's as got for third? Uh, Anders put in Bellevue. Yep. Right here. Yep. No fair call. So who's your number three? I've got Ipswich. Oh, okay. Mm. I've got Ipswich and you probably, you know, say Futinoff and Doyle, um, yeah, they are standouts. Yep. They have to have the same year, um, again, to re- to um, replicate the, the year they had last year. Yep. They just – it's that top everything. Sure. That's that top everything. Um, that hasn't put him in the top two for me. Yep. Um, but there are definitely a, you know, if, if Emil and Jason can have the same year, the same averages that they got there, I'm sure Jason would like to be in front of Emil. Yep. He'd love to be a ten point as well. Um, if they can have the same year, they will be a, they will be in the top four for sure. sure. Yep. For sure. Um, Ellis and Rue are up and coming. Yep. If the boys can, you know, put in a solid year, commit. Score some heavy points, believe in himself, you know, rub shoulders with, say, Furtinoff and Doyle and King with all that experience, um, they can up that average. Yeah, I've got him in the top three. Yeah, fair enough. Absolutely. Not on top, but yeah. Yep, yeah, right. So, yeah, Anders went Bellevue. I had Oxford. You had Ipswich. My second, second place, I've gone with Leicester. The boys. Cop that, the yeah. The boys. Yeah. The I, I, I fully agree with what you're saying about that vibe, that mm. camaraderie, mm-hmm. that and Wolverhampton had that last year. Right. They weren't stacked with with point with riders scoring nine points, ten point averages. Yep. You know, I reckon I rec- I, same as what with the Yanovsky thing. I mm-hmm. think Max is gonna have that same sort of not in the Grand Prix this year, he's gonna be a bit freer, a bit more Lighter in a way, less travelling, more more time at home. Yep, more time at home. Yep. Um, I think he's gonna. I think he's definitely. He's, he's nearly at a nine point average, all but nine. Yep. There's no. I reckon he can go that little bit further. Um, he's class. Absolutely. He's yes. so good to 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 watch style wise. Mm-hmm. Very Lee Adams about him. Yep. Um, and I think he, between him, Dougie. Sam Masters and Luke Becker, mm-hmm. they are just going to be bouncing off each other like they're at a trampoline oh, park. Word they will be, yeah. You know, I can't wait to see it. Um, I also put Richard Lawson in that same Danny King, Kyle Howe with sort of sure. of Louis Kerr, like just great British riders. You know what you're going to get out of them. Mm. Um, I know Drew Kemp's had some – some um, he's had some experience on the continent. He's rode in Poland a bit. Um, so, yeah – those this the the D- Drew Kemp and Joe Thompson they're the guys I don't know all too much about mm-hmm. but you know if you throw those two young guys into a fun mm-hmm. you know sort of I don't want to say I don't want to say party vibe but it's it's going to be enjoyable to be in the pits absolutely yep. so you know I, and Sam Masters was the number one for Wolverhampton last year yep. Dougie is arguably could be a number one as well I, sure. I can see those those boys just. Re- yeah, roping in some some good points. I think Becker, Masters, Douglas, well, all, look, the whole lot of them bounce off Mac Frick. If yep. they can follow Max, Max is going to give you nine point average, hundred mm. um, percent. Yeah, it, and he he might even be, this could be really good because you. When I think of the fun, I think of you know Dougie, Masters, Becker, and you think of Max. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Yeah, he's calm and cool. Nothing really phases him. Yeah. So he could see he could be the sort of thing that sort of mm. calms all the boys down a little mm. bit as well. I don't think I've ever heard Max swear in his life. <laughs> no. Never. <laughs> no, no. So no, he, Max is extremely professional. Yeah. Um. He's 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 the Lee Adams, Michael Carlson. Yeah. Yep. Picture image. Sure. Um, yeah, he could sort of calm the boys down a little bit yeah. as a as a leader as well, which yeah. the boys may need at times. Yeah. yeah, and to to follow his experience and his pace, yeah, I think will inspire them as well. So you think you think maybe as it a bit of analogy, you think these are a, a bunch of class clowns, and you think Max could be that teacher that ropes <laughs> them back in. I just think it's ing- it's an ingredient for success. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, awesome. I really do. Well, I've got them in number two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anders. 
Hadip switch at number two. Right now. Uh, I think he's he's a, he's a huge Doyle and Emble fan. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so who's your number two? My number two, just double check here. I got Bellevue. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Considering I had them at five, yeah. you got them at two. Yeah, I have. Right, talk me through Bellevue. I, I just like the potential for improvement. Mm. I really do. I think Connor Bailey <laughs> could be could be key. Yep. I really do think and Connor Mountain. I'm pretty sure Connor Mountains he, he might have some grass track. Oh, okay. Yeah, long right. track experience. Okay. So he's not scared. Sure. And when I when I think of that, you know, I think of Mark Laram and Joe Screen and the boys are just mate on it. Yep. So Connor's he's not going to be scared. Yep. Um Benny Cook. I just think everybody there, Nick Ladorn. It's just everyone's got the ingredients to up their average massively. Yeah. Um, and with – I really do rate Lindsay. I was really impressed with what he done this year in the Australian Championship. Yeah. Yep. Um, to take it to those boys. Um, I just think he's such a talent. I've been watching him closely at the start, uh, listening to his interviews. I think, again, he's probably the next sort of Jack Holder to come through. Yeah. Um, Bewley and Kurtz can take it to the – he can take it to Doyle and Emil on any track yeah. on any night. Um, yeah, I just think Lamo's put a, a smart – it's a yeah. smart team. Yeah, okay. There's a massive potential. I think there's been a lot of thought put into this um, to be there at the end of the season. Yeah. Not just to be good in the first two, three months. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like Bellevue. Haven't quite got them on top. Yeah. But for me, they're number two. And you know what? Even though I've got them down at fifth – I would love for them mm. to, to finish first. Like, there's a lot of Aussies there. Like, I, I would love to have all the Aussies at number one. Yeah. You just you, – unfortunately, you can't. So, but yeah, fair Should enough. Should do a little side team and put a whole Aussie team. Oh. How cool would that be? It'd be awesome. Could we fit them all in? Uh, no, there's too many. Too many. You couldn't get seven. No. You could not get seven. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, in saying that, our whole Australian side in the World Cup are all British-based. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Well, that's our – well, in saying that – I guess we've all gone number one, Sheffield. And as you and myself have all gone Sheffield. All gone Sheffield. And you know what? It's for fucking good reason. Yeah, Just true. have a go at the team. Mm. Jack Holder, Ty Wolfenden, Chris Holder, Josh Pickering, Cole Howe with Jason Edwards, Dan Jilks. Mm-hmm. It's just – it's quality everywhere. Mm. Quality everywhere. It's experience. It's also got that, that sort of um, fun vibe as well, like that Leicester – you know, they've, they've it's got a bit of every team yes. that we've just spoke about, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's got the the British base, yep. which is huge, and you've got the world riders British base, yes. the world's best riders British base in Holder, Holder and Wolfenden. And then you've got Josh Pickering who will just soak it all up. Yeah. Yep. Look how good he was going into the season. Yeah. It's pretty hard to not put him at number one. Yeah, 100%. And they're last year's premiers, so they're – they're going back to back. Now, we know that's incredibly difficult to do. Yep. There's a target on these guys' backs. Yep. But, you know, you've got pressure from that. Mm-hmm. I don't think Chris Holder and Ty Wolfen and Jack Holder and Josh Pickering, I don't think they crumble under pressure. No. I think they love it. I Absolutely. think they welcome it. Big time. You know, you, you put the two Holder boys in the same pits. Mm-hmm. They're going to bounce off each other. You, we saw what they did in the, in the World Cup together. Yep. Yep. Um, we saw what they do in the Grand Prix when, when Chris is in Jack's corner. Yep. It's... Awesome to watch. Um, I just you, – no, you, you won't be able to match it with them, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think there'll be teams that put it to them, yep. but I think they're always going to – they're always just going to be just a little bit too far out of reach. Yeah. It, it, this is going to be an unbelievable season. I think British P- Speedway is coming back. I just think you bring Ipswich up to Sheffield and you throw in – and we'll say Futinoff and Jason Doyle. They could beat – all those guys, mm. every heat, yep. without a doubt. So it brings back to the tier two riders. Yep. I just think it's to, to win that meeting. Um, are Ipswich tier two better than Sheffield tier two riders? I think it's the whole year is going to be colourful for British Speedway. Mm. I think it's it's wonderful. I think everyone's built a fantastic team. Um, I, yeah, British supporters, get out there, enjoy this season. Yep. Enjoy this season. And for us, Sheffield... Wow, mm. how cool does that look? Yeah, mm. and best part is it's all on Eurosport as well. Yeah. You know, God, if I could get up early and watch every meeting, I 100% would. And even BSN, the British Speedway Network, they yeah. cover a lot of meetings as well because, yeah, it's Speedway, British Speedway's 
She's coming back. She's back, baby. She's back, baby. With a bit of fun. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. With a bit of fun and relaxation. <coughs> it's awesome. I cannot wait. I think, actually, I think it, the the season gets kicked off in two nights' time. Really? I think it's yeah, Friday night. Okay, so, cool. Which awesome. Would be, which would be awesome. So, yeah, that's it. That's our... That's our predicted lineups. Um, let's revisit that in October. Yeah, let's see how, how well we did or how not well we did. Um, who do you reckon's your rider to watch? Just off the cusp, who do you reckon's going to be a bit of a standout? A standout, as in <laughs> performance? Rowan Tungate. Yeah, okay. Mm. Anders said Rowan as well. Did he? Yeah. Yep. He said he's the one to watch. Yeah, Rowan Tungate. He's, Rowan's been around long enough now. Yep. He can go out there and, and uh, match it with all those top guys. Yeah. So okay. off the cuff, stand out to, to watch. Yeah, Rowan. If Rowan has a good one, Oxford are going to go well. Yeah, awesome. Oh, it was it was really hard for me to pick one. I think the, the biggest enigma that I'm really keen to watch, I think it might be Magic Yanofsky. Sure. He's going it, to – it's it's yeah, I'm going to watch him with a keen eye. Mm. Absolutely, 100%. Um, yeah, well, that's it. That's our – that's our British Premiership preview. In the coming weeks, we've got the Swedish League to preview. We've got the Polish League to preview. And we've got the Grand Prix. God, I'm looking forward to that. Big year We need year. Grand Prix back, don't we? Big year this year. Can't wait. Awesome. And hopefully I'll get Anders back for, for those as well. For sure. Which would be great. Um, yeah. Oh, also, did you see, just before we finish, did you see on um, the Speedway Experience, mm-hmm. some of our local kids are mm-hmm. ripping up at the moment. Aren't they? And some of our younger guys on the 500s for the first time, mm-hmm. you know, um, Alex Adamson, Lachlan Russell. I've got a, a couple of a uh, couple of lists here. <coughs> Excuse me, Noah Grabham. They're just that. They, it looks like that 250 to 500 yep. transition looks seamless. Yep, great to see. Yeah, it's exciting. It's really <laughs> exciting. Mickey Holder and Greg Boyce are just having a ball of fun, aren't they? They are like absolutely. just mixing it with these kids, mm. giving them the opportunity. Mm. Um, Oh, sorry, should I say Phil Holder? Oh, Phil. <laughs> uh, what are we calling him? Uh, the Phil Morris of Australian Phil Speedway. Phil Morris of Australian Speedway. <laughs> um, yeah, the guys are doing a fan. It must, it's so rewarding for, for, for Mick and, and Craig. Yep. Yeah. It's, we've got some talent coming, mate. Yep. We've got some. And I said that years ago mm. when Jack Holder won the Todd Wheelchair Cup ah, at Curry. Yes, back then, yeah. He won that meeting, the, the first one. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a long time I can't ago. remember, but I remember saying there's another holder on the way. Yeah, yeah. Behind Chris. Yeah. That only felt like yesterday. Yeah, it's So true. it's not going to be long before these kids will be on the world stage. That's true, absolutely. Mm. Um, also, uh, Maurice Brown was tearing around. He didn't get a, U, uh, a European spot this year. Um, he was with Lesno under 24 yep. last year, so he didn't get a spot, unfortunately. So he was ripping around the pen last week. Him and Harry Ryan going going head to head. I spoke. I, I contacted Mick Pool because I know he's Mick Pool's nephew. Nephew, that's right. Geez, Harry's a talent. Yeah, absolutely. Harry Ryan is a talent. Has he got plans to go to UK? Do you know? Well, he finished. Uh, he finished fourth or third in the Australian under 21 title. Mm-hmm. So he's going over to qualify for the Grom SGP two. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I, I watched him down at Napoleon when we were down there. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, he is ag- aggressive. Yeah. He's, he's got the ingredient. I was saying yep. to Mick, mate, this young Harry Ryan, mm. with that aggression, he's got a little bit like the crump yep. mind, yep. which it's it's all in the mind. Yeah. Uh, he seems to have that. Mm. I just, I'm excited to, to watch and follow yep. Harry. 100%. And as well as um, uh, Reed Batty. He's someone mm-hmm. who's who's come in leaps and bounds. He's been riding a spurway bike for the best part of five minutes, yep. doing really well. He's a great flat tracker. And Lockie Hayes, these boys who were mm-hmm. ripping around Nepean last week, uh, it was great to see. But because Harry Ryan did get that qualification spot, there's a fundraiser for Harry Ryan to send him over to, to I don't know where the qualifiers will be, it'll be in Europe somewhere, sure, sure. Um, which will be on Saturday the 11th of May at the Cessnock Sports Club, mm-hmm. um, $50 a head. You know, get down there, support Harry, fundraisers. There'll be there'll be raffles and all that sorts of stuff mm-hmm. to try and get him over there. Because um, we all know the cost of what it take, what it, the cost to send an Aussie bloke yep. with all his bikes and mm-hmm. all his equipment over there just to go to the qualifiers. Yeah, you know, you, you might not even get that spot yet. So absolutely, it's, you know, it's it's a huge cost. So guys, if you can make uh, or, or donate or anything to help Harry Ryan get over to Europe, representing Australia, mm-hmm. representing himself, and yeah, it could be our next. Next Aussie boy over there. Absolutely. Well, that's well, all I've got. Congratulations on 12 months, mate. Oh, yeah, jeez. How good? 
It's I, been. It's I know been you've hectic. had. A, I know you've had a ball. It's been hectic though. We've had a fantastic Australian speedway season. Yes. This season wasn't the centenary meeting. Fant- well, the two meetings, the two nights, the sidecars, absolutely solos. fantastic. Yeah. We've had a fantastic season. Um, the Australian Championships, fan- like, wow. The competition, all the boys uh, riding, um, and David Tapp yep. has come up with another one. Yep. Yeah, there's one coming now. End of this year. Yep. It's in the making, so it's going to be big. Yep. Um, the International Spillway Masters. It's making a return. It's making a return. When was the last year? 2001, maybe? Something like that? Jeez, I was riding. Yeah. Yeah, so it was <laughs> It was some times ago. But yeah. that International Masters in the late 90s was the best time of my life as on a speedway bike. Yeah, wow. Because I got to come home. I raced all around the world. We all did, Crumpy, Lee Adams, all the European boys that Dave brought down here. It was all pressure cooker stuff in Europe. Yeah. And to come home to Australia and compete at home yeah. against the best riders in the world. On tour, we talk about Lester being the boys' team, the yes, boys yep. having fun. We just had fun the whole time. Yeah. I travelled with Boise one year. I travelled with Sam Malenko the other year. Um, just a ball of fun. So for David to, to bring that. Awesome. That that name back, yeah, just brings excitement to me. Yeah, so fantastic. Australian Speedway's looking up. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah, no, nah, and it was a fantastic, of fantastic summer. You know, with the Aussie titles, the centenary meeting. There was also a centenary meeting at Curry mm-hmm. as well. Um, yeah, it was. It's it's what the it's what Aussie Speedway needs. We need these these big meetings put on. So and the and the crowds turned up. They did. It's just yeah. a huge effort to all the supporters. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep turning up and, and supporting this wonderful sport. And and credit to David Tapp and and Darcy Ward for putting their heads together and doing that centenary meeting. Mm-hmm. And um, Tappy and and Power Productions will be will be heading up this uh, international master series again. So mm-hmm. looking very forward to it at Gilman Speedway. Yeah, at Gilman. Can't but wait. that is it. That's all we got. It's been a huge year. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we kicked off 2024 <laughs> with a bang. It was great. Yep. And um, yeah, let's get stuck into it. Another big year ahead. Good stuff, mate. Right. Appreciate you coming. Uh, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, we'll get you back on again and get Anders back as well. He's had a bit of a hiatus sure. last few months, but um, we'll get him again. All right, mate. We'll get him. All right, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, remember to, to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. You know, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, you know, rate us on Spotify, Apple, all that good stuff. It all helps. So, um, anyways, we will see you guys next week. Yeah. See you later. Goodbye. Can't take all spirit. Let's watch you go wide. Scotty winds it on. Watch out for fireworks in turn three and four here. Nichols tries the inside line as Wiltshire goes wide. Wiltshire's got it in the back. Fantastic ride from Todd Wiltshire. That was inspirational. Now, Anders, I have a question mm. for you. What's that? Where is the best place in the world? It's got to be Lake Macquarie. It's home for us. It is, yeah. It's our home. It's the best place in the world. It's beautiful weather. Yeah. The lake is huge. Yeah, it's amazing. You can wakeboard. You can water ski. Yeah. Fishing. Fish. For those of you that love fishing, you can yeah. you can stand up paddleboard. You can do any of There's these There's so things. much to explore. And it's in our backyard. The jet skis. Oh, that was the days. Remember those days where yeah. we used to rip around, go yeah. down the Swansea Channel. Yeah. Go out the Sand Islands, sunbake. And then if that's not enough, you can get out the heads and you can go out in the ocean. Best place in the world. Loved it. Now, I feel privileged mm-hmm. to be a local to here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of people that aren't. Well, then they'd come and experience it. So, they definitely need to hit up Kyle and Bianca at Lake Mac Adventures because they have got all the equipment you need mm-hmm. to experience Lake Macquarie like we have. That'd be unreal. Stand up paddle boards, yeah. kayaks, fishing boats, you name it, Kyle and Bianca have got it. I'd be jealous actually. And a great location too. They're only five minutes from Trinity Point yeah. down, down at Bell Collin. What's the best way possible that you would think to experience Lake Macquarie? Oh, get out there on the water. Get actually out there and and look around and yeah. experience it for yourself. Yeah, hit them up. They got they have the local knowledge. They know everything about the lake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get me excited. Hundred percent. And best part is Kyle. He will skip the boat for you too if you have not got your license. Nice. So he will take you around, show you the best spots in Lake Macquarie. Mate, we should just go there now. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs>